A recent favorite of mine is definitely Green Lantern, Green Arrow. It's a pretty controversial heavy-handed run by Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams. It tackles a lot of social issues such as racism, colonization, overpopulation, and drug abuse. Um, a lot of these uh, conversations people complain are uh, too woke these days, uh, but I'd argue that these conversations need to be had. Um, though I will say, uh, this book doesn't tackle most of them in the greatest way possible. Um, but this one is very important. This is the first issue, uh, of a comic to ever have a minor, um, struggle with, uh, drug abuse. And it's, um, it, it hurts a lot. You see him go with, through withdrawals, but he, he does eventually get through it. And, um, it, it feels really good by the end of it. I almost cried at a lot of these parts. Also, Jon Stewart gets introduced, which is awesome. Versus Black Green Lantern. This book's cool. Alright, let me tell you about one of the most important trailblazers in all of comics. His name is Will Eisner, uh, which is a name that you may recognize uh, from the Eisner Award, which is named after him. Um, he grew up as a Jewish man in the 1930s and 40s, uh, which meant that he didn't have a lot of job opportunities. Um, thanks to the rampant anti-Semitism in the U.S. at the time. So his only real outlet uh, was comics. And uh, in 1940, he created this costumed crime fighter, uh, costumed as in he wears a mask and gloves, um, called The Spirit. And a lot of these stories are just kind of uh, basic, basic uh, detective tales, uh, but some of these are really out of the box and super fascinating. And uh, a lot of them have created the language for what we know uh, for comics today. Um, unfortunately, not all of this has aged super well. Uh, there's a lot of racial caricatures, and um, it gets into some of the some of the unfortunate sexism at the time as well. Um, lots of hallmarks of cartooning um, of that era. Uh, but. Um, Despite all of that, uh, a lot of these stories are really excellent, and I highly recommend you check out at least a few spirit strips. Um, they're pretty fantastic. I picked this up very, very recently uh, because m one of my local comic stores just got a trade paperback section and, you know, I saw Alan Moore's name. I'm normally not one for, like, the 90s image extreme uh, boom of comics, but whenever I tell you this was a phenomenal work, it, uh, it really is. Uh, Moore only does 14 issues of this kind of silly X-Men extreme ripoff. Um, and it just, it just all works so well. Like, there's, there's a myriad of social issues that are tackled in the Alan Moore fashion, especially with these two characters, Voodoo and Zealot. There's a whole new team, uh, that are introduced, and they're all really interesting. Um, there's a very Ozymandias-type character. There's, there's so much good in this. Um, I, uh, I just, I just have to recommend it. It's, it's really damn good, and it makes me wish that more did an entire run, because I would read that. 
1945, the Razzis kidnapped 12 superheroes that were trying to fight against them, put them in cryostasis. They woke up 50 years later, Captain America style. Um, and that sounds really cool uh, on the surface, but it ends up just kind of resulting in a mediocre murder mystery story, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I just think you could do a lot more with this concept. But the art by Chris Weston is excellent, and J. Michael Straczynski tries to do his best Alan Moore impression, uh, and I think he kind of sort of succeeds. Um, but the ending is a little too obvious, and it feels like we didn't get as much as I thought we could. But this book is still pretty cool, so read it. Alright motherfuckers, today we're talking Love and Rockets. This is one of the most important indie comics to ever exist and pioneered the genre for decades to come, and it's still going to this day. Today we're just going to talk about the Locas stories, um, which are penned by Jaime Hernandez. There's normally a lot more than this, but this is all I have right now. Uh, so anyways, these stories follow Maggie and Hopi, who are best friends and sometimes lesbians, and how they navigate through the weird world of Southern California. There's a lot of crazy shit that happens in these. Uh, there's references to real-life women's wrestling, um, and, uh, lots of old sci-fi comics, or some superhero, uh, stuff. Um, the later volumes do get a little bit more serious and, like, away from the more fictional stuff. Uh, but this, this is still really good, so check it out. Alright, today we're talking Mike Allred's Mad Men. This is his creator-owned, uh, superhero book that's kind of more like a sci-fi adventure fantasy. It features this lovely character named Frank Einstein, who was dead, but now he's alive thanks to the power of science. Um, and it's just about him living his best life, pretty much. He's going on dates with his girlfriend, he's hanging out with aliens, um, he's fighting bad guys sometimes, he's, he's uh, meeting up with um, patriotic robots. Um, it's great. It's a super charming, fun-to-read book. Um, it uh, has very Jack Kirby-inspired art, as you can tell. Um, and it's just, it's just wonderful. It's, it's a great book. Uh, though, just keep in mind, if you decide to check this out, there's a lot more than this. Uh, this is just the early stuff.